Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. Two weeks left in November, then another month and the year's over. Make sure you do things like max out your 401k, your 403b, your 457. Now's the time to do it. I checked, I double checked, and I triple checked mine just to make sure. Uh, markets open a little weaker. Over the weekend, we got a U.S. debt downgrade, which, again, is the price we pay for our political foolery that we play. Um, adding debt and not being able to work together, Republicans and Democrats, not a good idea. So a little stock slippage today. More on that as we progress in the show today. Let's talk a little bit about what we saw last week and year to date. Year to date, the Nasdaq's up almost 33%. Pretty good year. S&P 500 up 15%. Pretty good year. If we can get those every year, we'd take it. We can't. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 3.4%. The 10-year Treasury sits at 46 basis points. 4.6%, 4.6%, excuse me. Got a little bit of the moon days in me, huh? Uh, Bitcoin at 37,000 to start the week. Stocks are on a roll. Um, trophies for everyone. It's one of those kind of uh, feelings. There's going to be a lot of debate in the coming weeks. What 2024 looks like. We'll do our best to get that for you. Fighting raged on around Gaza's main hospital. Those are headlines that don't feel comfortable talking about um, or seeing. A friend of mine who walks dogs was like, I wish I didn't have to turn on the news. I'm like, sometimes I hear you. Um, the Marvels made box office history, but in all the wrong ways. The 33rd installment of the franchise brought in a measly $47 million domestically. The worst opening ever for an MCU movie. And it made over $100 million less than the debut of its predecessor back in 2019, Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel. The first time a sequel has whiffed by that much in history. I'll be honest with you. It's, it's all feeling kind of too much for me. When it was just the movies, it was kind of doable. But when the movies blended with the TV shows, oof, too much homework to know who everyone is and what the plot lines are. Um, this week, there's going to be a big meeting in San Francisco, President Biden and President Xi. They're going to meet face to face for the first time in a year when Xi travels to San Francisco. Both leaders have said they want to repair the deteriorated relationship between the countries, the world's two largest economies. While he's in San Francisco, Xi will also be the guest of honor at the dinner with the CEOs of top American companies. There'll be some good headlines. Formula One hits the Las Vegas Strip on Saturday for its Grand Prix uh, debut. Um, Not debut, but first time in four decades in Vegas. Ticket prices are plunging, by the way. What's that tell you? Um, The first part of the final season of The Crown will premiere on Netflix on Thursday. That has been one that um, many have watched. Um, these episodes will cover Princess Diana's death in the auto accident in 1997. Um, that should help Netflix's stock or at least bring more awareness to who they are and what they do. Let's move on to today, shall we? Um, <laughs> excuse me, I'm having a little, last week I had a little bit of a head cold and got a little bit of stuff still in there. Um, bevy of earnings reports from the nation's retailers today, Home Depot, Walmart, Target, TJ Maxx, and Macy's. Um, we also, well, that, that's all in the week. Other key data is going to be retail sales, producer price index, initial jobless claims, and housing reports. Housing starts report. Got a lot going on. Boeing. China is considering ending its freeze on Boeing with a new 737 MAX deal. That news has already uh, shown up in the reports out of the Dubai air show. I think there's two really big air shows per year uh, in Europe. Uh, One is in Dubai and I think the other is in Germany. Uh, Maybe they travel around. That could be not that much of a a nerd on it. 
but that's where the, a lot of the big contracts get announced. Uh, there's also big car shows, which is interesting as well. Um, a lot of concept cars are released at, con at car shows, not necessarily cars that we'll be driving, but that we could be driving. The risk of a government shutdown on November 17th, that's later this week, is continuing to play a factor on the markets. House Speaker Johnson is advancing a two-step continuing resolution that keeps funding at current levels for certain areas through January 19th and others areas through February 2nd. And that is assumed to be dead on arrival with the Democrats and even with some Republicans not liking it. Moody's lowered its U.S. credit rating outlook from uh, negative from stable to negative on the U.S., calling attention to partisan politics as a basis for doing so, along with the government's very large fiscal deficits. Importantly, Moody's affirmed that the USA's AAA credit rating all at the same time, but saying that's at risk if we do this again. So the two-year Treasury note um, yield is up one basis point to 5.06%. The 10 years at 4.66%. Um, so a lot going on in economic data this week for us to digest it with a start on the uh, rising Treasury yields uh, being affected by the debt downgrade, uh, credit uh, rating downgrade. Uh, a, a, a wait and see kind of approach for Tuesday's release of October's consumer price index. That's going to be a big one on Tuesday. Uh, seeing if there's inflation, what the reading is, where it's coming in at. And there's a little bit of selling in strength because we've had some, just a big run in the last two weeks on Wall Street. That kind of makes sense um, as far as the headlines go for today. Taking a look at individual stocks. Um, which kind of gives me a feel for what's working and what's not. Is it big tech? It's not really big tech. NVIDIA's up five, but I see Adobe down 10. I see Apple down 160. I see Google down. So I see a lot of red today on the names that we talk about regularly on the show. Oil's creeping a little higher. And it's $77.86 a barrel. That's where we start not working as well as we should when we get into the 80s. Um, it turns into a big tax on the U.S. economy and um, a bit of a drag. So Apple said last week that they want a bigger part of the $183 billion gaming market. Um, they've done a pretty nice job of, of with what's called Apple Arcade. It's a subscription service. Um, they ultimately charge you a monthly subscription. Remember that Wall Street loves subscriptions. But um, now Apple is also going after more high-end graphics cards for their notebooks, uh, laptops. They have a $2,500 uh, one that is pretty high-end and can obviously run games, uh, a faster processor that helps it do that. So we'll see um, if they're able to really crack into the PC slash console market that Sony and Microsoft's Xbox dominate. Uh, on the higher end platforms. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. Mm -hmm. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. Um, we'll have some announcements later this week that are important about the future of this show. And uh, you can tune into these right here on AM 1212 20 KDOW. I'm Rob Black. What's the best way to choose a financial advisor? Download our guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. NVIDIA is a winner today. On a day where there's a lot of red, a lot of losers. NVIDIA has released or unveiled its next major AI chip, the H200. AI chips are already the hottest commodity in tech and to have the newest, latest, greatest one makes you all that in a bucket of chicken. Chip incorporates 141 gigabytes of memory and offers up to 60 to 90% performance improvements versus its current H100 model. That's pretty impressive. Generating answers from popular AI models. 
H200 powered systems will be available in the second quarter of 2024 from NVIDIA's hardware partners and major cloud service providers, including Amazon, their web services, Alphabet's Google Cloud, Microsoft's Azure, and Supermicro. With NVIDIA H200, the industry's leading end-to-end AI supercomputing platform just got faster to solve some of the world's most important challenges. That's very press releasey, right? Um, its current high-end H100 became available in volume earlier this year and is priced at roughly $25,000 per GPU. Product quickly became the technology industry's most precious resource. With Tesla saying, we'll take as many as they can get us. It's a pretty good demand problem. In recent months, some experts have said AMD's upcoming M300 was also promising for inference applications. It's not clear how those AMD chips will stand up to NVIDIA's revised H200, though. H200 announcement shows NVIDIA's new strategy of more frequent, higher performance product launches. It's underway, and it's bad news for the rivals. Also not the greatest news for NVIDIA because they're in a research and development cycle and they don't let the chips get cheaper. So they have to continue to get hits. They can't take advantage of any sort of um, efficiencies created in the supply line. I find that interesting. 2024, the election season is underway. Tim Scott has dropped out. So I think that means there's about four left to challenge for Trump's position, which I don't think anyone thinks is going to be catchable. But I don't know politics well. Nearly half of investors believe 2024 elections will have a bigger impact on their portfolios than market performance. So what that means is people are willing to vote for a Republican if the Republicans can be good for the economy and their stock market. People were willing to vote for a Democrat if the Democrats be good for their um, stock market and economy and ultimately their wallet, right? Candidates are debating changes to Social Security, the bedrock of retirees' income. For many Americans, planning for retirement may feel daunting. And the idea of who's going to not mess up the system is kind of relieves some of the worries that are being stoked right now. Almost half of investors believe next year's presidential and congressional contest will have a greater impact on the retirement plans and portfolios. Two thirds, 68 percent of Republican investors believe the election outcome will have a direct and lasting impact on the stock market versus more than half, 57 percent of Democrat investors. It's funny because I don't as a guy who's in the stock market, as a guy who's pushing towards retirement. That doesn't cross my head, but I, I see why it does others. Older investors are most fearful because the lasting impact a recession may have on their retirement accounts. Pre-retirees age 55 to 65 are more concerned about an economic downturn and in inflation. One third, about 33%, are managing their investments more conservatively ahead of the elections compared to 31% of non-retirees. So elections kind of make us crazy. Social Security is on the ballot in 2024. 40% of Americans' pre-retirement income on average comes from Social Security. The trust funds on which Social Security relies to help pay benefits are projected to run out in 2034, which if you think this year went fast, think about what the next 10 years will be like. At that point in time, 80% of the benefits will be payable and we'll have to potentially add more debt to our economy and or change the rules on Social Security to make high earners put more in. That's certainly always going to be on the ballot. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, he's seemingly in second place in the GOP primary polling, said during this week's Republican debate that his message to seniors who currently collect benefits is promise made, promise kept. Donald Trump has vowed to leave entitlements like Social Security and Medicare untouched. Republican candidates were divided on whether to raise the retirement age. For instance, New Jersey governor, former New Jersey governor Chris Christie suggested that the wealthy should not take benefits they do not need. 
which it's tough to tell someone you put money in your whole life and you get nothing out. But I get it. Um, it's a security net for society. It's not a investment plan for uh, the wealthy. I, I get where he's trying to go with that. And trust me, I know that this is emotionally charged. So I need to be careful what I'm saying, which is ridiculous and yet true all at the same time. Take a look at the markets today. Um, we got a little bit of consolidation after last last two weeks of gains. That's normal and healthy. You're seeing the markets down reasonable. The Nasdaq's down one half of 1%, whereas the Dow Jones Industrial Average is just down fractions. Home remodeling is cooling amid higher interest rates. That's one of the things we're hearing out of um, do-it-yourself projects, and that directly affects companies like Home Depot and Lowe's. As do-it-yourself home improvements, they can be pricey. And if you're borrowing on a credit card, you could go too much for me. People step back and step aside. Just a sign that retail sales are continuing to slow. The decline in 2024, if that comes past, would be the first decline in more than a decade on annual spending for improvements and repairs softening. Um, it's interesting that people really get charged about interest rates too. Because even talking about the story uh, amid higher interest rates, I these aren't the highest I've ever seen in my life. Um, they are on credit cards for sure. One. But that's a, a different story that I think credit card companies are out of control on what they're allowed to charge. Um, these are pretty historically, like 30 year ago interest rates, not all time highs, if that makes sense. <clears throat> but if you're new to, in the markets in the last 20 years, you're like feeling it for sure. And households are feeling it. There's no doubt households are feeling it on credit card delinquencies and slowdowns in the economy. NVIDIA is up five on that news of a new chip. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial, money, investing, and more. I'll have some important announcements about the show in the future and how you'll be able to hear it later on. You can find me online at robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. For more information about EP Wealth, visit robblack.com. That's robblack.com. So one area that I am enjoying watching the debate, it's not politics. One area where I enjoy watching the debate is tipping culture. Americans, um, we're funny. We're funny to look at. Pew Research Center discovered that 72% of people said the long-standing practice of tipping is now expected in more places than five years ago, which confuses Americans. Even as Americans say they're being asked to tip more often, Relatively few have a great deal of confidence about when and how to do so. It's really an interesting conversation, isn't it? For me, I'm pretty well off. I know that. I used to not be. I used to be very middle class, and I would describe my college years as lower middle class. And I started my own business, which put me very poor for a few years struggling uh two jobs that kind of thing uh one job for the career and one job for the bills so i get that we can be confused on this issue dining at sit-down restaurants 92 percent a majority said they would tip 15 percent or less for an average sit-down meal getting a haircut 78 percent having food delivered 76 percent and let me show you the confusion on that one. Um, there was a play at the high school that I believe in parents supporting their kids and going to those kind of things. Even if your kid's not in drama, it just shows your kid like, wow, look at what other students can do. Uh, we had a little get together at our home and my spouse bought four pizzas on DoorDash. And I looked at the bill. I was like, what are you doing? Um, so we didn't agree eye to eye on the tip. Let's just put it this way. It was $150 for four pizzas. And I was expecting to see maybe 120 total. 
So she was very generous, shall we say? Using a taxi or ride share, only 61% of us tip. Buying coffee, just 25%. Eating at fast casual restaurants, just 12%. I think this all comes from the argument of the screens that we got in the self-service kiosks where the final line is, how much do you want to tip? 15, 18, or 21% typically is what I think I see. Um, and it's just automatically part of the screen now. So those automatic prompts, I think, have got people not confused, but something's going on there. 21% of Americans say tipping is more of a choice. 29% say it's more of an obligation. Isn't it funny that we can't even agree the great debate on tipping, if it's appropriate or inappropriate, as sometimes I like to throw down. Where are you going to retire? That's a very good question. And it's something I think you should have kind of set in your mind, sometimes in your early 50s. But it's something you should be able to talk about in your 40s with your spouse. Uh, in my 40s, it was kind of a taboo topic because my spouse doesn't want to leave the state due to um, her family's here. Like you don't really see your family all that much. You could still, you know, fly in when you need to. But uh, it was a sore subject to say the least. So, do you want to retire down south? California is getting braced, is bracing for wet season. Uh, it's going to start later this week. And if you're in the mountains, that means snow season. So do I want to move south? I, I certainly have said San Diego on the air um, just to escape some of the winter weather. But Santa Barbara would be nice as well. I'm still not finalized on that being a possibility. But most people, when they think about going south, they think about going to Arizona or going to Florida. Florida's got beaches. It's got Disney World for the grandkids. It's got a massive retirement community known as the Villages. Uh, but a lot of people are moving to Florida now for careers, too. For the first time since 1957, Florida has become the nation's fastest growing state after decades of rapid population growth. Florida residents, 21% um, are 65 and older. You need to know about the state. If you're going to be potentially moving there. You're going to see signs that say evacuation route uh, because there's a lot of hurricanes. Florida is often the bullseye for hurricanes. The Atlantic hurricane season is a long one. From June 1st to November 30th, half the year, you're thinking about hurricanes. With August and August, September, and October being the peak months. Uh, most homes are made to withstand the 125 mile per hour winds, uh, but not all. Florida is a lot less taxing. Moving to Sunshine State could save you a lot of money in taxes. Um, it's one of the 10 most friendly tax states for retirees. They have no state income tax. That means no state taxes on Social Security benefits, pensions, IRAs, 401ks. It also has no inheritance tax or state tax. Snowbirds who maintain a second home in a colder state can't just tap their heels together and establish residency for tax purposes. Need to spend more than half the year there. That's 183 days. Um, don't expect to take uh, tax auditors take your word for it. You need to prove that you've been there that many days. Homes are in short supply in Florida. The average Florida home is selling for $392,000. The average United States home sells for $348,000. Again, if you're a retiree, that's a big difference. If you're retiring with $1 million to $2 million, that's a big difference. If you're retiring with $10 million, you're like, that's a cheap home. Uh, you'll need plenty of insurance if you live in Florida. Risk of hurricanes makes insuring your home in Florida much more complex than and expensive. And generally speaking, um, five to ten percent of your coverage amount for damages caused by a hurricane, so you're paying a much higher deductible. You need to find out if you can insure the home before you buy the home. Not exactly what I want to be doing in my senior years of bailing water out of the kitchen. 
Florida's got a lot of creepy crawly things. That's worthy of note. Uh, termites and alligators, rats, um, rats on the beach and the trees, perhaps on your roof. Um, so rat control can cost homeowners $300, $500 a year. You'll want to keep an eye out for alligators, panthers, and pythons. Florida has an estimated 1.25 million alligators. And every now and then you do hear of a horrible, horrible ending of life because of that. Probably not enough to say I'm not going to live there, but something to be aware of. If you're a little old lady going for a walk. Um, there's a lot of thought that retirement is golden in Florida, but if you pick the wrong area to live in, in Miami, Orlando, or the Keys, those are very different lifestyles than retiree lifestyles. So you're going to be dealing with a lot of traffic. Florida tourists can slow you down. Uh, Florida sunshine, not necessarily good for your skin cancer. Sunburns can cause premature wrinkling and uneven skin coloring. So these are things that you should think about on when you're going to move and where you're going to move. Uh, because there's so many senior citizens there, there's a lot more scams that you're going to have to be aware of to keep your door shut. Don't let people in your home. Don't bite for an offer that sounds too good to be true. Um, just little things like that. One of the biggest stories of our times right now, I'm not going to say AI. I'm going to say the obesity issue. The obesity drug will go if he cuts risk of serious heart problems by 20%. That is a material number. So I've seen the weight loss drugs now about a thousand dollars a month and I could afford that. And I have to say to myself, uh, do I want to lose that extra 20 pounds and cut my risk profile? I probably do. That's a, a major breakthrough in society. Wagovi is a high dose version of the diabetes treatment, Ozempic, which already has been shown to reduce the risk of serious heart problems in people who have diabetes. Experts have known for years that losing weight can improve heart health, but there has been there hasn't been a safe and effective obesity medication. In the U.S., there are more than 6.6 .6 million people um, who obviously could lose weight. The new study obviously says that cardiac risk, if uh, one of my in-laws is in the hospital right now for uh, blood pressure, that's not quite great. So it, increased, it creates a situation where you can't walk or move. You don't have the strength because you don't have enough blood pumping through. Um, anytime there's an infection in her body, the, the heart changes the way it pumps. So she has to be really careful about the infections, whether it be a simple ur ur urinary tract infection um, or something that she eats that causes her gut to get kind of messed up. Um, it's not cheap. Each time you go into the hospital, it's a good twenty to thirty thousand uh, dollars. Now, and how much of that is covered by healthcare is a big question. But doctors are going to say, "Hey, we don't have to treat all these health issues if we have people lose weight." According to studies, now will the insurance companies bite and give a senior citizen a thousand dollars a month of a drug to cut their profile to keep them out of the hospital? It's going to be an interesting dilemma. <laughs> You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. You are listening to the Rob Black Show podcast. For more information on EP Wealth, visit robblack.com. That's robblack.com. 300 factories in Bangladesh have closed as thousands of workers who make clothes for brands like H&M and Zara protest over wages as low as $75 a month. They're seeking a three times pay increase. Now, again, this is where we get into some soft spots of this show where it can be almost embarrassing to talk about. That means higher prices for clothes for you and for me. Fortunately for me, I don't buy a lot of clothes. Um, I don't like a lot of choices is what it comes down to. 
how do you feel about that? You've seen the labor strike in the United States with actors and screenwriters. And you're like, oh, I don't know. Um, there's way too many actors who don't even make enough to cover health insurance. Um, should they be in that industry? Should they have a union when it's really an industry of a lot of have nots more so than the haves? Then you get into an industry like Ford and making cars where you go, I get it. The average paycheck should be higher for um, a larger group of people who are doing similar type jobs. I'm not getting into a union conversation right now. But ultimately, we're going to be paying more for streaming. And we're going to be paying more for vehicles. That's okay by me. Quote, unquote, I'm wealthy. But for those who aren't, think of the people on the lower side of the income chain. That's a stress. Getting to work is an important way, uh, part of life. This is kind of fun to look at. Um, booths are going the way of the McDLT. I saw this on a just a kind of goofy uh, financial website. And drive through visitors rose 30% from 2019 to 2022. Indoor dining dropped 47% from 2019. I stopped and thought, okay, my family, when we hit fast food, which we don't do often, road trips usually, do we ever go into the restaurant and eat? And the answer is no. Uh, it's always get it in the car, put all your trash in the bag, get the trash out of the car the moment you get to your spot. There's a regimen in my life, right? Um, but companies like McDonald's and Taco Bell, they've opened drive through only stores now. Chick-fil-A is building a drive through highway, a four-lane location that will serve 75 cars at once. And AI chatbots have taken orders at chains like Carl's Jr. and Wendy's. Speeding you in and out is the way that they can make more money. I thought that was kind of interesting. The Chick-fil-A, the idea of not even a real restaurant that you can see, just kiosks that you talk to in a drive through go up to a window and grab your food. I strangely find that interesting. Thanksgiving is getting more and more expensive. <clears throat> this is typical this time of year, right? Even with food at home, inflation showing 2.4% since last October, this year's Thanksgiving will not be less expensive. Although I have seen some pretty crazy things on uh, commercials. Watch a little sports this weekend. Uh, college football is something I'll do, not actively, but it'll be on during the weekend while I'm cleaning the house or something. I saw $21 off uh, Thanksgiving turkey. Like, wow. <clears throat> um, last year, the average cost of a Thanksgiving feast for 10 was $64. Um, even as the pace of rising grocery prices has slowed in recent months, the Bureau of Labor Statistics found that grocery prices were up 17% in the last two years. So it's going to be a pinch. Wildfires and droughts have caused extreme weather patterns to impact crops' ability to grow, which drive up prices. Grocery stores are paying more for the food to be brought to us. Uh, so the average price of Thanksgiving meal expected to slightly increase this year. $64 for a family of 10. So you do the math and it's $6.40 per serving. Uh, I do like the holidays. And I used to be a person who didn't really care for the holidays. To me, when I was in my 20s and 30s, it was time for me and a girlfriend to go away, to get a vacation in. And now it's time to relish that my kids are growing way too fast. Uh, and that's something the Apple iPhone makes horrible. Every day I open my phone and it's like, eight years ago, here's a picture of your kids. I'm like, please don't show me that again. Um, it's a little on the tough side. So... 800-516-1220, get your calls on the air. Anything you ever want to talk about, we can talk about. You can always find me online at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. Exxon is aiming to become a top lithium producer for electric vehicles with an Arkansas drill operation underway. 
I will be paying attention to the story passively to see when it does it become a big part of their business. But they purchased 120,000 acres of land uh, known as the Smackover Formation. Exxon aims to supply enough of the mineral to support the manufacture of 1 million electric vehicles annually by 2030. Interesting thought, right? Company that makes or refines oil, uh, investing in electric vehicles, which don't consume oil. Seems to be smart on the surface, but is that their specialty? Consumer spending in, fell in the month of October, according to the new retail tracking monitor. Um, the October data accounts for more than $500 billion in sales, showed weakness in gas stations, electronics and appliances, furniture and home stores. The consumer took a spending break ahead of the holiday season. Will that play out into the holidays as well? I certainly feel like, man, we, we consume a lot, don't we? And at times I get a little fatigued by, like, can we take a month off? And that's the question. Starting modestly before the COVID pandemic and accelerated amidst the outbreak, economists turned to real and high frequency private sector data to gauge the economy. So a little bit more retail intelligence coming in and we're finding that people are slowing, showing weakness. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. It's gonna be a big week of economic data. Be here on the show. Drop your questions to me, Rob at robblackshow.com. It's Rob at robblackshow.com. I'm Rob Black. Questions about Social Security? Check out the Social Security Retirement Guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth.